All right, ladies and gentlemen, here's what we got going on. This is a correct computer setup. So what we have here is the fan is locked into place by a couple screws. This computer is sitting on top of the fan and it is locked into this thing. It's a little ledge right here. The fan keeps these cool. These computers uh, get very hot. I have on the side here, I have my flash drive plugged in to this little cord. If this cord's sticking out a bunch, please shove it back in here. It's not meant to come out. If the mouse cord is sticking out a bunch, it needs to go back in, just like I'm showing you how to do right now. Okay, so we only need a little bit. This gray cord will not be there. It is for the camera that I'm holding. My uh, Chromebook is sitting right here in this upright position. There is a pair of headphones that should be hanging up right there. Uh, that's ready to go for you guys to be able to watch this how-to video with your Chromebook sitting just like that. These cords need to stay back here. There is an additional plug-in right here. This plug-in is plugged into this big computer. Okay? This little USB-C cord is to charge your Chromebook. Okay? So you can charge a Chromebook off of this computer, which is being powered uh, by all of the wires back in here. Don't get into that. Don't mess with any of the cords or wires. Uh, they are set up very specifically. Okay, now to get into the rest of this video. I'm going to cover the keyboard here because there's usually a lot of questions about what keys I'm pressing. Um, so I'm gonna point that down. Minimize this. So this is what your screen looks like, okay? Or close to anyways. I'm going to click on Torchmate S or Torchmate M. M is the one that you really want to use. Uh, we're gonna have to use M uh, by the time we get to the end of this, no matter what but not all of the computers have a working Torchmate M on them. There's at least two that it doesn't work on. So I'm gonna show you how to do this whole thing in S, and then we will save our file and bring it into M, so that way we can finish uh, this assignment. So I'm gonna open up Torchmate S. So this is student, is what that means, not master. Uh, so Torchmate student is what I'm in right now. Um, I'm going to download the template. So I have a template for you guys. So if you go into Schoology, scroll to the uh, where it says the, the project here. It is titled Locker Door Sign Example. I'm going to click on that. It brings me to what appears to be nothing. I'm going to go ahead and click on this right here. This is the actual file. It's going to download. And it brings it into this. Um, this is what has been downloaded recently. I don't need all of that necessarily. I'm going to use it, but I'm gonna come in back into Torchmate S. I'm gonna click on File. I'm gonna to go to Open. And now it is looking for, uh, it is going to Downloads because that's where I was working out of earlier. If it doesn't go there, then you're gonna click Desktop. And this is the options that are going to come up. Then you're going to click on Downloads, double click with the mouse or with the uh, touchpad. And the one that I just saved, uh, well, I just downloaded this one. However, I have a more updated one that I've been working on that I want you guys to see. You guys will have this one once I upload it to Schoology. So you will open up the one that you just downloaded which is going to be this one. This is what you're going to see. So here's what you got. You got a couple of notes here. I'll point these out as, as we need them. Um, we got the locker doors. Here's an example of the locker door. Here's an example of the locker door. And then here's some extra parts. Um, and then we have this big box. This box is replicating um, the Torchmate, which is that big red and black CNC machine over there uh, in the room in the welding shop. Uh, we don't necessarily need this box. It's not super important. Um, it, it, the box should be lined up with the zero coordinate. You can see right here um, 
my cursor is there's a zero and then over here there's a zero you do need to check this that when i put my mouse right here on the corner left of the box it shows that it's lined up with zero and it's lined up with zero this should look just like your math class zero coordinates okay first step we're going to zoom in i am using the scroll wheel so right here i am scrolling in and then i scroll back out okay and then i scroll in and back out you can lose yourself literally uh with doing this like you'll you'll lose where you're at and then you might lose like you might have to start over your file if you get too aggressive with that so be careful wherever i point my mouse is where it's going to zoom so i'll point my mouse right here and i'll zoom into this thing and it just keeps going and then i can't zoom in anymore it's not doing anything else so i'm going to go ahead and zoom out i can zoom in somewhere else zoom in and it follows my mouse wherever my mouse is that's where it's going to zoom out and then so i'm going to zoom in over here in the zero zero coordinates and if yours is not like that you need to let me know because that will cause you problems later i have the name here uh if you have a name that is not going to work for this uh, let me know come up with an example uh, a nickname do your initials do three letter initials um, my name is pretty simple four letters fits on here nicely you can do something else that would be um, fairly reasonable if your name's like seven or eight or more letters don't do your name uh, let's come up with something else or do your initials or last name first name do do last name or first name uh, let's stick with those or your initials so I have my name here. This is typed out for you guys. You're gonna have to double click. So I just double clicked on it and then I can highlight the text and I can go ahead and change this. So I want to make sure that my letters are capital. In this program, you wanna make sure that your letters are all capital because life just works out better in this program. It's a very simple program, um, but we gotta keep it simple, unfortunately. And fortunately. So, I just changed it. This is simple enough. Um, let's say you had somebody else's uh, um, initials in here and name. There's up to six characters, literally. Um, this would work just fine. I need to highlight it. So click on it. So I see the, the box or these these little boxes come up around it. I'm gonna come up here. This number is important. The width needs to be 7.25, 7.25, and then I click enter. Then it doesn't matter what the height's doing necessarily, but I need that to be correct. So let's say your initials or your, your letters, you have six, six letters, um, that's going to work. That's not gonna be two small letters. I'm going to go ahead and put it back to my name. I just wanted to show you guys how to change that. And then click on it, come up here, and I want it to be 7.25. Okay, next step, you're going to take this pre-made bar that I gave you, and I'm going to click on, so I'm going to click off. So I'm literally clicking in the white space, and then I click on my name or the letters i'm going to hold down the shift button right here and click on the bar the box bar whatever we want to call it and then i'm going to click on the c button that centers my name to the bar and then i'm going to use my arrow keys to bring it down i'm going to zoom in here zoom in real close zoom out a little bit here okay I want it to overlap. I want all of my letters, make sure that they all overlap with my bar. And they do. Then I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to come over here and click on the weld tool. This is the overlapping circles that are joining and getting to be a bigger object. Okay. Now when I click on this and move it around, it's all one object. Okay. This is the easy part. At this point, before it gets any more complicated and we 
um, run out of time or anything like that. Let's go ahead and file and we're going to go save. It's going to save to the downloads. That's okay, but that's not going to be helpful if you can't use this computer again. So we're going to go to file, save as, go ahead and click on the desktop, and then I'm scrolling with my scroll wheel here on my mouse. I'm scrolling down to find my flash drive. Your flash drive uh, likely doesn't have a name to it yet, so right now you can change that. You can click single click on the name and then you could put in your full name and, and I'd even add your class hour so you know Carl Raby 1 uh, Carl Raby 7 it, it doesn't matter what class hour you're in just put your full full name in there because if you leave your flash drive out which is highly likely and it doesn't have your name on it anywhere whether on the label or written on it you're not getting that flash drive back because it's probably going to be gone. But if I can plug it in, and if I find it and I can plug it in and see whose it is, I can get it back to you, which is what you want to happen. I have a lot of different flash drives and I have this one painted orange, so I titled it orange, so I'm going to leave it orange. This do not use one, don't even click into that. Uh, you're going to lose all your stuff, so don't use it. Uh, but I'm going to use the flash drive here and I have myself organized so you're just going to save it onto the flash drive i'm saving it into um uh, my file so it's organized a little better i would like you to title this uh your name and what this project is so this is locker sign and then please title it design you will thank me later for this design because you're going to have several files and if this says design it's going to make a whole lot more sense to you later click save okay my file is saved i'm going to go ahead and exit out of this and show you how to open that back up from that saved file i'm going to open up torchmate s again go up here click on file Click on open and click on desktop, go to the back to my flash drive and you will just be sitting there. You don't have to click through the folders. Uh, Carl Raby Locker Sign, design, it says design and I double click on it. Excellent, we're ready to go. Sometimes you might need to, we'll point this out to you. Right here, it'll say .edu, .cdl, .bak. The file that we're working with in the design is always going to be this .edu. If you can't find your file, you're like, oh no, where'd it go? I can't find it. And you're using the Torchmate Master instead of the Torchmate M instead of the Torchmate S, it defaults to something else. It doesn't default to the .edu, which is annoying, but that's where you're finding errors at. So here is what I have so far. We need to get a design on the bottom. This is fairly quick, but there are lots of steps. So feel free to hit the pause button along the way. I'm gonna go to the internet, type into the search bar, clip art, soccer ball, black and white. Okay, that's what I typed in. A bunch of different pictures came up. I can click on the images here, but I actually want this soccer ball right here. You want a super simple image, black and white, n hardly any detail, if no detail, because our CNC machine is, um, is basically trying to cut things out with a flamethrower. It's not cutting things out with a tremendous amount of detail. And so the less detail we have, the better your sign is going to look. Last year, somebody did a really cool scene with the beach and a couple palm trees, and it was like three palm trees, and the majority of the palm tree leaves uh, got blown away because the plasma cutter can't cut out a tremendous amount of detail. It can't even do a little bit of detail, actually, uh, because it's basically using a flamethrower to cut things out. It is what it is. So I'm going to use this super simple soccer ball. I'm going to right-click on this image. I'm going to do save image as 
You can save images to two places. Save it to the downloads or save it to your flash drive. Highly recommend the flash drive because then you have your image. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do is save it to your flash drive. Click on the flash drive and I'm gonna title this uh, soccer ball clip art. Now before I hit save, I wanna point out something here. This says PNG, that's just a file type. Doesn't matter what file type we're using or what you find. Uh, we're, we have to use uh, JPEG in this program. So I'm gonna show you how to convert it because there's a lot of good images out there that are not gonna work for you but we have a very easy way to convert it. So soccer ball clip art, I'm gonna go ahead and type this in um, for editing, just so that way I know what the file is. Save, minimize out of that, minimize out of that. I'm looking at my desktop here. This little search bar is pretty handy. I'm gonna type in paint. There's a paint app. So I need to change that picture into a JPEG. So let's go ahead and open it up. And I'm going back to my flash drive. Click on lock door sign, soccer ball clip art for editing. There we go, that's what I want. Boom, it shows up. Okay, that's what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead and go file. And you can edit it here if you want to get creative. You can use the paint tools uh, to change things uh, I can erase. I only want this soccer ball, so really I could erase this one here to make my eraser tool bigger. Um, I can get rid of all of this. If there's extra stuff you don't need, go ahead and get rid of it. Okay, I'm done editing. Or if you wanna add text or whatever. Colors don't matter because the CNC doesn't do colors. It's just turning the torch on or off is all that it does. I'm gonna go file, save as. I wanna save this as a JPEG. Okay, I'm gonna click on my flash drive. I'm gonna, I have an extra folder in here, so I click on that folder. Soccer ball clip art for editing. It's not for editing anymore. This is soccer ball clip art. So I'm gonna take the for editing part off and then I'm gonna click the save button. Okay, I'm done. Exit out of that. Come back into TorchMate. File, uh, wait, cancel, wrong thing. File, acquire image, scan and trace wizard. I'm getting fancy, we got a wizard involved now. I click on my flash drive, where I have it saved, soccer ball clip art. That's what I just titled it. Click on that guy, click next. So here we can kind of mess with this a little bit. I don't really want to change it too much, so I'm just going to leave that probably right there in the middle, actually. You have to do something with it. Um, it doesn't let you just click next without sliding that scroll bar. Next, next, apply. Okay, this little pesky button up here in the top corner says retrace or finish. Retrace goes back to where you can slide that slide bar back and forth a little bit different if you wanna adjust things as you get more experienced with this program, or you can just click finish, but do this first. I'm gonna click finish. And then I'm gonna zoom, zoom in. This is a tiny soccer ball. Grab the corner, make that bigger. <clears throat> cool, I want it to be about that. So that looks good to me. I don't want it to be too much bigger than <coughs> Then the overall height, so if I'm gonna cut my soccer ball in half. Um, actually, why don't I just go ahead and do that? Oh, wait, I can't do that. This is weird. I can't see the grid. You guys see this grid pattern going on at the back? I can't see through my soccer ball. That means that there's multiple things here, but it's all grouped together. So let's go ahead and ungroup that. So I have my item selected, what I just brought in. I'm gonna to go to, I can either do break path or I can do ungroup. I'm gonna go ahead and just break the path. That seems like a more destructive way to do this. Okay, now I can click on individual items. If I delete them, well, that's a piece of detail that I want, so I'm gonna hit back arrow. I'm gonna highlight this whole box. 
come over here and I'm gonna do this X or weld. So it's where the two circles are overlapping and what's in between disappears. So I have these white spots on top of this black object. I want where they overlap, where they're touching each other to disappear. Do I want to discard the objects? Yeah. Okay, another warning there. Okay, cool. Now I have a soccer ball. And I can see through the soccer ball. I can see my grid lines behind there. This is what I want. It's not objects on top of objects on top of objects. It's all one thing. God, now I need to cut my soccer ball down to size. I'm going to cut this thing in half. If you guys have a fish or a baseball or football or something, you guys can do something similar. So I'm going to draw a box right over top of this. And I'm going to highlight both objects. My box is splitting my soccer ball in half. I come back here to the ore weld. Boom. And then I can just start clicking on the top stuff and clicking the delete button. And then I have half my soccer ball. And I can put my soccer ball over here. I'm gonna hold the shift button right there. Click on my box next and click the C button for center. And I can see that I am overlapped. I can overlap a little bit less. I can overlap a little bit more. Um, that's your judgment call. So that's what I have. Kind of looks like a funny soccer ball. I don't know that I like that. Um, so I might edit that. But for the sake of this video, that is what it is. What I could have done also is I could have put my name on the bottom side of this instead of the top. Hindsight. That would have worked out just as well. So if at this point you want that done i'll uh in the file that i upload for you guys to download i'll put a couple different version or a couple tries uh or like parts where you can just keep restarting uh and you don't have to get stuck and go backwards but for the sake of time in this video i'm gonna go ahead and leave it i need to join my top piece to my bottom piece it needs to be all one object i'll come over here do the basic weld which is the overlapping join everything together weld and now I need, i'm moving towards production here I need to come up here i need to create a tool path online now things are getting very detailed click on basic cut this is the most important thing that you can do right now this feed rate has to be 100 i need you guys to set it at 100. Uh, look at the person sitting next to you and tell them to set the feed rate at 100 because they need to remember and you need to remember. And one of you may not remember and you get all the way over to the torch mate or the, to the CNC machine, it's going to try and cut it out. It's gonna go at an extremely high rate of speed and it's not gonna actually cut through your metal because it's gonna go too fast. So if you don't set this to 100, 100 it's not going to work. Did I say you gotta set it to 100? Then if you don't, it's going to mess it up. Okay, if I didn't, I just did. Oh, and by the way, tell your neighbor to set it to 100 also. Next step, go to lead in, lead out. We're not doing anything up here. We're going to go to just start point, middle longest segment. We do want that. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Look at that. I got two objects. And I got this button up here that says show tool pass only we're going to use that here momentarily so this is your design what you can edit and this is telling this is basically just a path so we could cut this out of wood we could cut this out of metal we could use a laser to engrave this onto something and it could burn or etch into wood or burn through the paint on the side of a cup if you wanted to put a cup into a fancy uh, laser turn table and so this is just a, a path it's this computer telling a machine a cnc machine of some sort we have a plasma cutter and we have lasers and C, uh, wood routers next door uh, so this is just telling the machine what to do and how to do it however we still have to get it this into its own file the cnc table cannot read anything with this However, I am in the student version, E-D-U-S, student. It has no ability to get this 
program, this file that we just created, out of this file, or out of this design file. So I'm going to go to save. I'm going to click on the X button. Now, you either need to get into Torchmade M on your computer, or you need to find one of the other computers that has Torchmade M. You can ask around, ask me, I can point out which ones have it. And then you're going to open the file from your flash drive. Let's go ahead and find that flash drive. There's mine. Oh, here it is, .cdl. It's trying to open a .cdl. That's annoying. Let's go ahead and open that .edu. Oh, look, now my design's... They, they exist. So, Carl Ravy Locker Sign Design. That's what I titled it. So, I'm going to open that. Wait, where'd my thing go? That was right here. Oh, no. No worries. Click the Show Tool Pass Only button. Boom. Everything else disappears because now we're only looking at Tool Pass. I'm going to click on this Tool Pass. We're going to do something new. Come up here. You have your X coordinates. Make sure that says zero. Then you have your Y coordinates. Make sure that says zero. So you notice that I was using the keypad to type in zero. Okay, click off of it, click back on. And it says X zero, Y zero. Perfect, we're ready to go. Then I go up here to machine, click output. I'm gonna click the cut now button. Cut now. Make sure that I'm saving this to my flash drive. And this is interesting, it says dot GM as a file save type. We've dealt with a lot of uh, file save types now. That one's brand new to us. And that's important because that is what the big black and red CNC machine is going to be able to read. This is the only thing it can read. It can't read anything else. Can't read a book. Can't read your design file. So let's go ahead and change this to say cut file. So that way when we go to open files, you know which one to open because it says which one it is. Carl Raby Locker Cut File. And if you have to do this several times and you end up having on your flash drive multiple things um, that say design and that say cut file, your flash drive's organized and there's no confusion. And you're going to thank yourself for it and probably pick on the person sitting next to you for not doing that. So make sure that you're the guy that's labeling things just how I told you to label things. I'm going to go ahead and click Save. Boom, it's saved. So now uh, I'm going to click the save button right here, or I can go up here and do save. It's the same thing. This is a floppy disk. Has anybody ever seen a floppy disk before? That's old technology. Still involved in this, apparently. I'm going to go ahead and exit out of this, and you're done. You can go ahead and uh, log off, which the way that you log off on this computer is you click on this button here. And then you click your name. Whoop. Never mind. We'll click here. Um, you can hit the restart button if you have to do this. Most of the time it comes up and says log off. I'm not sure why it's... Oh, here we go. Extra clicks. I'm going to do sign out. You don't necessarily need switch user for any reason at all. Um, or you just click on this and you can do the restart button. That's fine too. This seems practical though. Sign out. Then you're going to take your flash drive, and you're going to go to the CNC machine for the next steps. Stay tuned for those video directions.